What's up, you guys? It is I, Bumu. Just want to talk about a brief video on how to target and market on a very saturated uh, area. For those who don't know, I particularly saw, sell renewable energy. Net metering, to be very exact, 1.2 million jobs are being created. And nonetheless, there's about almost 300 plus companies just in Florida that does renewable energy. If you're in a specific market like Tampa, Orlando, Miami, uh, that has a very uh, high concentration of people that are living in one spot. It, it's inevitable for you to uh, face a very saturated market or a market that people are getting hit on every single time. So one of the biggest advices I can give you is you have to know your market, right? You got to do market research. Market you're actually targeting and what's the problem that they're facing, right? So one of the things that you always want to focus on is getting people that are already hot or getting people that are warm or people that are fairly new. And one of the approaches that I like to use is using Zillow. Uh, and for those who don't know Zillow, Zillow is actually a realtor platform that gives you access um, around the area or specific address or zip code, property updates on the public record that's uh, recorded in the county according to the state that you live in. Mainly the things I like to do is, uh, like I talked about in my previous videos on canvassing advice, what I wanna do is actually go, if you're selling security, go to a home that already has security. If they have solar, go to a home that already has solar. Pool clean service, go to a home that already has a pool, right? And go talk to them. Go talk to them and figure out like how many people actually come to this neighborhood. What are some things that you guys been seeing? Oh, what are some problems that you guys been facing? Try to find the discovery and get to know them as much as the neighborhood as possible as well. Because they already bought, right? So they already have the service. They have an experience with the service. So it's a good way to find out just based on questions, actually, to find out what's going on in the neighborhood and going on how the product and service is going for them. And from there, you just ask them, like, who are some neighbors I should talk to? Who are some people that have been mentioning it? Do you actually keep in touch with the company that actually offer you that service? Because if you're having a great experience and you know someone, we will actually want to give you a referral fee for actually referring to since you're living proof of having a great experience. And now you can off branch off and having a more network and having more confidence what's going on around your surroundings rather than going blindfolded, right? So just going back to Zillow uh, and I'll be right back with uh, my iPad. Just so you guys are on the same page. All right, guys, my apologies. There was some technical difficulty that happened. So I'm going to restart it. We're going to use through my phone recorded screen on how to use Zillow the proper way. So I'm going to scroll through and click the app Zillow. That's what it's supposed to look like. The yellow with the case actually show what the dollar amount is on those properties with a certain filter. I just use the, the feature called draw and I'm going to draw out on a particular neighborhood that I want to start working or canvassing on. I'm going to circle that, then I'm going to click apply, I'm going to use filters, and I'm going to find the houses that have been recently sold, or I can even use what year it was built. So let's just say I want to get the houses that are fairly old and fairly new at the same time, or a certain range, or let's just say you don't have any preference that you can do. For this particular instance, I'm going to choose what days have been sold recently to a new home buyer. You can do 60 to 90 days, 12 months. I like to do six months. And these are the houses that have been sold in the past six months. If you happen to click it and scroll up, right, just like this, I can tell that the house was sold on October with a price point. And if I keep on going down, it's gonna show the owner's name. I don't wanna do that because uh, for privacy sakes, of course, for this particular video, this is pending, so this is why it's important to do your market research so you know ahead of time what homes to target and what homes not to target for this specific incidents for people that sold their house six months ago. This people just moved in not too long ago. They're going to ask you that we're still settling in. We're putting pieces together. This property is actually for rent, so you know what houses you should focus on spending your time, especially if it's a saturated, really good housing market to there, but a lot of people went through but they just recently moved in and then they're new home buyers and looking for that buyer experience, that's a great way to do it. So now I'm gonna actually go to this home because they just recently moved in 90 days ago. This home as well has been over 90 days. I like to target homes, like I said, over 90 days for those who actually settled in. 
I like to get people that just moved in three months, uh, six months, because uh, usually they're still in the buying mode stage and they're really getting adjusted as a new homeowner as well. So what you can use is use the Jones effect that's going around that say, hey, hey sir, uh, I've noticed that you guys don't have a security camera. I noticed you don't have renewable energy when it comes to your home. Uh, by the way, have you had uh, these services before or have you heard about it? Have you and your wife talked about it? Uh, have you noticed uh, uh, in this neighborhood this much incidents of crimes have been happening or people breaking in? Now you address the problem, right? And they're going to be like, yeah, uh, we had some people came by or they're going to be like, oh, we, we didn't even know. Uh, we're actually recently just moved in and you can talk about, hey, are you a new home buyer? Is it your first time home? And most of them, they're going to say yes, just because that's how the market is nowadays. And a good way to say it is, oh, congratulations, that's a big accomplishment, big accomplishment. Where are you guys from? And now it comes a very, very, very smooth, small talk all of a sudden. You can guys talk about where you guys from. Uh, you can talk about like where you used to live. And you can talk about, oh, that neighborhood is actually very secure. Or, oh man, that's a, that's one of the neighborhoods that I have a client that went through this. And you can talk about a little bit about the neighborhood, some problems that they're facing. And regardless if they move to a home, from an apartment to a home or renting a home to owning a home, the problem's always the same, right? And that's why you always have to go to a straight line along with Jordan Belfort said. But when it comes to renewable energy, how I specifically talk about it is like, have you ever had the same utility company before you move in this home in the past? And most of them are gonna say, uh, you'll be surprised, about 50-50 of them say yes, that they had the previous utility company. So now you can go to the rate pitch. Have you always noticed that like they always been increasing their rates? Oh my God, welcome back to that utility company that has always been raising their rates. Talk about a joke, or you can talk about, well, welcome to the worst utility company in the country. Um, since you never had it, let me give you some updates. I know, very lighthearted. I try to make it casual as possible, get them a little giggle. Then you go straight into the problem, whatever, how you pitch it. I always talk about, hey, the bill that you have currently is a forever bill. As time goes on, things is gonna get more expensive, right? And it's a forever bill. So people are just looking at second option. Now, I don't know if you'll qualify or this will work for you, but basically what we're trying to figure out is apples to apples. What is the better value for your home long term? Now, I'm not trying to get a yes or no today. I'm just trying to book appointment just so you have a better idea. What would you say you guys been paying since you guys been here? Okay, 150. Wow, uh, that's like a mini mortgage. And uh, like I said, the rates are gonna go up. So you won't be surprised if that bill one day is gonna be 170 bucks, right? Right, so I would like to have you and your wife on the same page instead of making things one-sided. Like, like I said, we're not here to get a yes or no because you don't have nothing in front of you. What is a better day and time to come back uh, to give you the information and give this a try? And that's when you book an appointment, get a little small talk, grab the info, whatever you need in order for you to be ready for that presentation. Once you get new neighbors, then your work your work really starts is actually spreading the message to other neighbors and once you get that sale you can ask referrals as well but you can always go new constructions new constructions is a little bit different because you always have to focus on the new home buyer experience the first time home buyer experience about ownership owning their dollar instead of renting their dollar because they've been throwing their money away so they're in that fresh mindset because so you have to reiterate hey what's going on in the uh, community what's going on in the market so you almost want to be a teacher in a sense for those with new development. For those who's been living there for a while, you, know, you want to focus on more so on solution base, which is there's a lot of people that come and buy. So you can talk about other services as well, especially if they've built in the 90s or uh, homes that are 20 plus years old, that's when you want to focus on home improvement, the solution product, right? Uh, and saturated markets that what they focus on is price protection plan. Yeah, instead of the high rate program, we're trying to give homeowners that, that qualify the low rate program. And these are some of the pro products and services that we specialize in, which is HVAC, insulation, and uh, solar, or any other services that require some energy efficient uh, products that are coming around the property. Just because these houses are built in the 2000s, a lot of your neighbors have been calling us for home improvement. And what we like to do is typically after consultations go around and see those who actually need some home improvement or see those high bills. Uh, we're not here to grab a uh, yes or no today. All we're doing is just booking appointments to uh, get more information to see if it's a good fit for their home to start off with. 
And if you go from there, like being so ton of focus on selling one product, it doesn't give a window of opportunity for people that have been living in one community for 20 years uh, because once a year, once a month, once every six months or once every uh, three months, there's someone offering that kind of service, right? Especially if they don't have panels or they don't have any security camera, uh, security system. So what you have to do is talk about it's a home improvement. This is what it does, the solution, but don't really go too much detail. Instead of trying to sell the thing, like the drill, try to focus on making the hole or like, hey, what if you had a hole and then hang your pictures? What if you had a hole just so you can hang your banner? Uh, what if you have a hole just so you can actually put in the TV screen? Instead of, hey, what this drill could do is so awesome. What this knife can do is so awesome. You know, you need to get this knife instead of talking about, hey, how old is your knife? Uh, how long have you been using them? Has it been rusty? What kind of things have you guys been doing in the home? Uh, since you guys been here for 20 years, how old is the AC? How old is the roof? Have you thought about making any changes? What's keeping you guys from actually doing those changes and really go from there on a question basing selling uh, basis? And you'll be very surprised. I mean, it's not gonna work every single time, but I my motto is trying to get 1% better every single day just so you can progress. If you spend about anywhere from two, um, about an hour and a half to four hours every single day prospecting, uh, talking to people, everyone. In this industry, people who make the most friends have the most interactions win every single time, every single week, every single day, every single month, every single year, every single time of your career, right? So the more friends you make, the more people you talk, you're gonna win. And I don't care how uh, good of a person you think you are when it comes to sales or a bad person you think you are, the more people you talk, you're, you're gonna get in the groove. It's just like working out. First time working out, not so great. As you progress, you're gonna get used to the muscle, pi uh, muscle fiber tears and build more muscle and be more efficient when it comes to your workouts and become efficient when it comes to your physical ability, mental ability as well, because you're in that state of mind and uh, good health. So 1% better every single day. Don't stress out yourself that you have to always like hit a certain target. I always tell myself I'm gonna spend two, three hours. I don't care how the interaction is gonna go. I'm gonna focus on what my market is. I know where I'm at. I know what kind of service I need to specialize, whether it's new home buyer market, saturated market, where I'm gonna focus on new home or buyer experience, or very saturated market that looking for home improvement uh, because the house properties are 20 years old. It's about that time. Open your window of opportunity if you have an opportunity to use your financing to your best advantage and add other things to it just so you get a wiggle opportunity because all you need to do is sit. I think setting the appointment is the hardest uh, when you sit down and pitch, it's that that's the easiest. That's what I believe in and that's my motto. Don't stress too much on like on one particular pitch. Be diverse, you know, build a portfolio of clients and it might be hard at first just because you, you're switching up a little bit, but practice won't make you perfect. Practice will make you better. I just want to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You will never be perfect, but you can always be better. Uh, that's my model of being 1% better and I wish you guys luck. I uh, would like to hear your success story, some comments on all what you guys did and what some results that you guys got supposedly implemented and I encourage you guys to implement it because close mouths don't get fed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.